And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with the Game Boy Geek. Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. Today, we're gonna be back in the old days in the printing presses, and we're gonna be putting together the old school newspapers. Extra, extra, read all about it. This is a game from uh, Mayfair Games. It's for two to six players, and there's a bunch of different scenarios that allow you to tailor the game from 60 minutes to three hours, depending on what you're in the mood for. So it's a worker placement game. We're gonna be gathering stories, trying to rush the press. Let's take a look. At the beginning of Extra Extra, you get to pick your board, which is gonna be your color of meeples, and it's gonna be your specialty. So this guy would be a specialty in sports, or leisure, or world, or business, or home herald, or in this case, the purple political. And you'll start with two reporters that you'll be able to send out in the first round, and some that will be able to be sent out in the other round. Whatever color you get, you also get a card here, which kind of acts uh, um, as a card later on that you can use. So let's talk about how the game works. There's actually nine different scenarios that you can play in this game. There's really short games, there's medium length games, there's really long games that take a different amount of time depending on how big and which scenario you're doing. For example, in scenario three, we're using this one board here and we're going just to the tabloid. So we're doing just this one here, but it does use the full rule sets. Some of the earlier scenarios use a condensed rule set for beginners. You know, if we go to scenario four, we would now be using all of these in the Berliner. And you can do one where you're using this entire sheet. You can also flip these boards over and you can have all different scenarios that do different things of doing both pages at a time. For example, we have scenario eight here, which will use both of these pages and you have to use certain stories to fill in your area. So whatever your scenario you're playing, some of them might have some special rules and such, but in this case, let's just do scenario three and you're trying to get stories to fit on your newspaper. And so here we have the game set up for four players here. There's three individual boards that get set up. They flip over for five and six players. Now one board has the round summary, which help you keep track of all the phases in the game. There's eight phases in each round. Now, well, everyone will get income each round and you'll get $400 income minus $100 for each reporter that you have. So in this case, I get 400 minus two, so I get $200. Now, I must say the money in this game, again, similar to a game they just produced called Flea Market where we complained about the money. Look at that. Same thing, they look very similar, especially in dark light. You can barely tell the 100 and the 500s uh, from each other. Bad choice there. They should've just either made them all the same or made them quite different in color or something. But you get your income. We'll tell you what you do with that income in just a moment. Now there's all different cities here. New York, London, Paris, Rome, Berlin, Tokyo. They're gonna have cards out there that people are gonna be trying to get to do set collection to try to create, collect stories and put them in their newspaper. But before that starts, everyone starts with one stringer card, which allows somebody in player order, someone will start with the first player marker, any, anybody can use their stringer card to grab any one card before people start placing people, and this can happen every round. So these are pretty special cards. Then, after that everyone's used or not used the stringers, or decided not to use them, uh, we'll go on to the placing reporters. And so, as you can see, there's three boards, and there's many spots that you can place your workers on the board. So say it's my turn, and I want to go to London, because if I stay here, I'm going to be able to take all these cards. Remember, I'm the purple player, so these ones are actually really good for me. There's some good bonus cards here, I'll tell you what they do later, but I'm going to go for this. Now, if the next player uh, decides he wants to go for it, he can outbid me in this spot. He can go here and he has to bid at least $100 and I take my guy back, right? But then maybe I come back and I say, you know what? No way, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you and your $100 back, they'll take it back, and I'll spend $200 for this spot because I really want it. And there's a lot of bidding that goes on uh, for tight spots and tight spaces that are really uh, wanted by everybody. So I would leave that guy there. And, and in turn order, people would be placing workers, possibly trying to outbid, and this will continue until everybody is out of workers. Now, because you can get additional workers uh, during the game, and because people can bid and kick their other people's workers back, you'll go in turn order, but sometimes people will be out of workers, and you'll, you'll get to place a couple in a row. But everyone's gonna place their workers out. Now let's talk about what all these different spots do. Because after everyone's placed all their workers, we activate the reporters. And you'll see this red start symbol, and it's gonna go all the way through here and all the way up and down and around. You go all the way through all the thing, and that's the order that you resolve the workers. So let's talk about what these actions do. Now this is the news deck. Anybody that had 
a Meeple or a reporter on one of those locations around the world, they would get to take all the cards that are below that and put them in the hand. So purple would get those, red would get those, and it's not just those three, it's all six locations. Anybody that placed them would get them right away. Then we would go up to the morgue, which is the old place where clippings die. These are old pieces of old newspaper where if you go here, you could get two clippings. Here you could get three clippings. What clippings do is essentially they allow you to act as if it's a card later on because we're going to be using cards for either photos or types typewriters as we try to turn these in to get uh, stories. And you get two or three of these depending on which spot you're on. And these clippings can essentially act as a wild. So this could be a, a photo uh, card to help me get things. So this is kind of a because you when you're mixing mi mixing sets You're gonna be used the same color or, or type of card politics to get stuff And sometimes the cards you want won't be there and you'll be able to use some clippings to to, to you know to, to act as cards Now the newswire up here you can spend uh, so you can discard what's called a newswire card And you could take two or three of any of the cards on the newswire now a newswire card looks like this It says newswire interview so you would put your worker here, you would discard one of those cards, and you'd take two or three of these cards uh, that you want. Now, there's gonna be three to start the game. If these don't get bought at the end of the round, these are gonna move here, and three new ones are gonna come out. And so it's like a, a rolling tide of cards that you'll have to pick from, and that's the news why. So it's a way to get more cards. Now we come all the way over here, and people can start at the editor's desk now, and the people that put their workers there will begin to try to get some stories. Now some places, uh, most of the places have this blue out of ridge and those are contested spots you can only one person can go there but here we have green spots or green uh you know squared uh, spots that you could put your workers those green spots uh, allow you to put one worker there but it's uncontested so if someone went there from one team or one person someone else can go here too what typesetting allows you to do is after you have a a a, a, a story that you want to put in your in, into your paper, you can use typesetting to remove or move around or flip and do different things like that. So for example, if I had this on my story, but I realized I really need to go the other way, because whenever you place things, they gotta, the A has to be up. You could use that typeset to then flip or move around. Now it's going the other way. Sometimes you'll buy stories and it won't fit at a time and you'll have it out here. The typesetting will allow you to take it from out here and move here. So essentially you can take anything that you have off your board or on your board and redistribute it any way, flip any way you want to help you figure out your puzzle here. That's what typesetting does. Now going here allows you to get either a column or a headline. Now a headline has to go here, and this is used in the scenario we're using, such as the tabloid scenario three. But if we were playing the longer scenario with the broadsheet, uh, the column would go here and a headline would go there. Now if we're going for a headline, I gotta have one news card uh, and either two cards of my specialty. So I'd have a card that says headline or column and then two of my specialty, which is that purple politics, or I could have two headline cards and one of my, of my specialty. That's how I would get a headline. The column is you would need one news and three cards of different specialties, and you would grab the, the headline and column. And these, the, the, the headlines actually have your specialty right on it. So if I did that, I would get this, and I would place it there like that. This is gonna be worth six points at the end of the game. Now, if I was here, I would be able to get this story. It's a size six story. So I would need to dis discard uh, six cards. And we look here, we need four typewriters and two photos. And they all have to be from the same specialty. So let's say I'm going for this. And I have one photo, two photo. And then I also have one, two, three typewriters. I'm one typewriter short, but remember, we can substitute clippings. So I have two clippings, which is one typewriter. So that gets me all the things I need, but I also have this extra, extra card. It has one of the two colors that is the one that I'm getting. So I'd be able to get this story. I'd also get an extra, extra, which is bonus at the end of the game. And I also get this bonus because I used at least two of my specialty colors. So those are some bonuses that come into play. So I would place it on my tabloid like that. This is going to be 15 points at the end, plus these three. And with the extra, extra, you always get the small one as well. So this is going to be 15 plus three plus six for just this. That would have been a lot. Now I didn't have to use my own color, but you do have to use all the same color to get them. And you, do, you would do the same if you were in some of these other spots. They're just different sizes and different needs of the different papers there. This one is a, a uh, microphone, and you can put your guy there and you can discard as many of these microphones to get one of these here. And you can place those on a story that you've already placed earlier. 
So if earlier I had already placed that story, I could throw away, and or after going to that space, I could discard two interview cards to get one of these, and you have to discard one card for the size of the story. Since this is a size two story, because it's two grid blocks, I would get that. And what this does is it basically doubles this. It says times two. So this would actually be worth six. This spot allows you to go, and it's a late breaking story. You can repeat any action that someone has taken on one of these spots. So if somebody was here, but I really needed to do this size, I could go there and I could take that action and get one of those stories that are left there. Here is the classified. You can go there and you can discard cards to get the different classified. So it's a radio and it's a radio, a crossword or a cartoon. Essentially they give you a point and if you're rushing to finish your paper, you can get this here and put that there to try to finish the game in this case and try to finish my paper. Now these advertising spots allow you to claim advertisements uh, for one, two or three size and it's one, two or three hundred dollars. So you gain that money and you place this on your grid. So if we were playing some of the, one of the larger scenarios, you could do something like that. Now it doesn't give you any points at the end, but it gave you money and it helps you try to fi finish your board because sometimes finishing your board is good because you get some bonus points I'll tell you about later. This spot allows you to sell one to three cards for hundred bucks each. This place allows you to get more workers. So as soon as you put a guy there and you activate that, you get a worker from your pile. But remember, it's going to cost you another hundred dollars every round to keep them employed. Uh, here you can take a hundred dollars to loan out a reporter. And then here you can take one of those stringer cards, which again allows you to grab any one of the cards you see uh, at the beginning of the round. So those are all the spots on there. Now at the end of the round, if anybody has finished uh, a gone to press, in this case, I finished the entire game because we were just doing this. On the two-sided uh, board, if you finish one of the two pages, you would have gotten a bonus. And depending on the scenario, it tells you which points to put down there. In this case, it's a six, a three, and then a one. And in this case, since it's it literally, you finish the board and the game's over, the only pe person that's gonna get more than one of these is if somebody does uh, is the first to get there, they'd get the six. And if someone else did it in the same round in this scenario, they would get this and so on and so forth. So those are just extra points for going to press. But again, on the two pages, you'll be getting these when you finish the first page and then maybe the second page as well. But in this case, the game was over. We would look at everybody's board. We'd look at all the bonus points. We'd look at all the, all the things there and we would add them up and whoever has the most points wins. All right, well, there's extra extra. Now, you know, I typically like realistic and or historic themes, right? And this theme's awesome, newspapers. You don't see it very often, except one of the odd things is, is this game came out about two months after Penny Press came out from Asmati Games, which I just recently reviewed, and that thing uh, won the tabletop death match that was out there. So it's weird, you got this cool theme that isn't used very often, and then within two months, two games come out with it. So naturally, everyone's trying to compare this or wondering how this compares to those two. So let me start there. First of all, the theme is obviously very close to this. It's pretty much the same thing in both of them. You're gathering stories of different types, uh, and you're trying to, and, and rushing to press, and trying to get your newspapers gathering stories and putting them on your board is actually very similar between the two. But other than that, the game is completely different, where Penny Press is a lighter, uh, you know, area control game where you're, you're just fighting for stories to fit on your board and it, thinking of an end term goal as to which ones you want. It's very fast, it's streamlined, um, plays in about 45 minutes, it's light, but yet has a bite. And I really liked it and that's why I love that one. This, this one feels completely different. Even though the theme is there, it's the same. You're doing the same things in general and you're even putting things on a board, like stories, and you're trying to fit them just like Penny Press. So it seems like there's a lot of similarities, but they, they really feel like way different games from a mechanical standpoint. Um, this one, you know, it's worker placement. I do like worker placement games. Uh, and so this is part of that. Now, the thing with this game is I liked it. I didn't dislike it. Here's a very important point. Mayfair left out an extremely important rule in the detailed section of when you turn in cards to get a story. When you turn in cards, as you saw my, in my overview, you have to turn in cards that are from the same type and or color, I guess you should say. So, but in the rules and the section that details tells you how do you turn in cards, they have like four or five bullets and that's not in there. Now it is mentioned in the first page of the rules in the overview of the game. Lord knows why that much detail was put in the beginning of the rules, but not actually stated in the detail rules. I bet 95% of the people miss this and play it wrong like I did the first time I played this. And if you play it wrong, it will break the game. The game does not feel good. It does not feel tense. It does not feel right. It feels too easy to get things done. It's broken. The problem is most people are probably gonna play it this way because the detailed section of the rules tell you that. Get the rules right. 
If you play it the right way and you have to turn on the right colors, it completely changes the game and makes the game enjoyable. It's a fine game. Uh, it really makes the game a lot different. That one little rule. Uh, so after playing it right, uh, it is a fine game. There's nothing wrong with it. Um, I felt like this game didn't really bring anything new to the worker placement genre, uh, other than the unique theme and some of the things yeah, they match. You're trying to get things quick and go to quick, go to press quick and get the bonuses for doing that and trying to end the game quickly. Or you can try to take your time and try to get the cards to do the interviews and put them on. So there's different ways you can go. The probably the most interesting part of the games is that bidding mechanic where somebody's on the spot and you can bid money to get them off, right? And you can buy get reporters later, but you get less money each round because you're paying them out. So you have less money to bid off people of spots, but you have more spots you can go on. So you're either like having a bunch of guys and go a lot of places, but not a lot of bidding power, or you can have few guys with a lot of bidding power to get the spots you really want. And there's that balance there. That was probably the most interesting and most enjoyable part of this game. The rest of it, it was ho-hum for me. It wasn't bad, it wasn't great. It was just middle of the road. It didn't bring anything really new to the genre, I feel. Um, so, not a bad game. Some of you might really enjoy it. If you really love worker placement games, this might be one you want to check out. Uh, but it didn't totally blow me over. I, for a, uh, paper, newspaper theme game, I'm going to keep Penny Press because I just like that. It just felt so streamlined. This one, it's not that it takes long. It moves pretty quick, but it just felt like there's a lot, there's obviously a lot more going on, a lot more things to think about. It felt a little more bloated, a little less streamlined than Penny Press did. And they're completely different anyway. Uh, but that's this. It's an okay game. Not great, not terrible. Extra, extra. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top rated audio podcast at dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching the Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.